morning i am dr vivek singh and this is the third part of the rheumatic fever now in this part i want to talk about the clinical features so in part 2 we saw that rheumatic fever is a multi system disease it is affecting the different system of the body more than one system of the body now let us see what happens in each of the system what happens in each of the system of the body let us draw a figure the first is the this is the this imagine consider that this is the joint this is the joint these are the joints now the second is the i will draw this part so this is the heart this is the joint and brain joints or joints and heart now this is the skin and this is the subcutaneous tissue subcutaneous structure now rheumatic fever it is going to affect almost all the important structures like brain musculoskeletal system the joints and the heart and skin and the subcutaneous tissues now what happens in each of the organs in joints remember a mnemonic remember a mnemonic l a m p s so what is i will just draw this brain on this side on this side so that i can create a space to explain that part this is the brain okay so in 75% of the cases in 75% of the cases there is a involvement of the joints there is involvement of the joints and i gave you the mnemonics l a m p s yes. lamps now what do you mean by lamps it means that in joints someone who is suffering from a rheumatic fever if you want to know about the joint of that person if you want to know about the clinical features the symptoms that he comes with related to the joints now you ask about the joints that are involved so in rheumatic fever large joints of the extremities so the involvement is the large joints of the extremities are commonly involved in rheumatic fever and the involvement is asymmetrical the involvement is asymmetrical asymmetrical large joint involvement m means migratory remember the word migratory remember the word migratory the fourth is polyarthritis means involvement of 
two or more than two joints. There is involvement of two or more than two joints. And S is severe, the pain is much severe and next S means it gets relief from salicylates or NSAIDs and SIDS gives prompt relief relief NSAIDs gives prompt relief so when there is involvement of the large joints of the extremities which is asymmetrical migratory in fashion involvement of two or more than two joints that means polyarthritis and it's so severe but it gets prompt relief after the use of salicylates or NSAIDs so these are the important points that has to be remembered when someone comes with the rheumatic fever and comes limping to you so you, when you ask about the joint pain they describe using the concept of this LAMPS now the next sure the important point so when there is involvement of the joints there is a typical features of the inflammation typical features of the inflammation in the joints and at the same time the effusion effusion may or may not be present the effusion may or may not be present but at the same time remember in the involvement of the joints when it heals it heals without any residual deformity it heals without any residual deformity that is the good point so it heals without without residual d for d for me d it heals without residual deformity now i want to use one term that is jacquard's arthritis what do you mean by jacquard's arthritis jacquard's arthritis means when there is a recurrent when there is recurrent acute rheumatic fever when there is a recurrent acute rheumatic fever this acute rheumatic fever involves when involves this acute rheumatic fever when involves the metacarpophalangeal joint and causes the deformity and this is known as jacquard's arthritis arthritis so remember large joint asymmetrical migratory polyarthritis severe at the same time relieved by salicylates and on the next side there are typical features of the inflammation effusion may or may not be present it heals without any residual deformity and the fourth point is jacquard's arthritis these are the points that should be remember in joint involvement 75 percent of the case in 75 percent of the case there is involvement of the joints now what about the heart it is one of the most important organ of the body and always remember almost all the clinical features almost all the clinical features of the rheumatic fever it gets resolved it gets resolved later on but accept the cardiac manifestation accept the cardiac manifestation which does not get resolved or there is a permanent damage in the cardia in the heart there is a permanent damage but at, when you con when you come to the joints brain skin and the subcutaneous tissue the clinical manifestation or the inflammatory process or the damage it gets resolved back but in case of heart the clinical manifestation or a complication it gets permanent now let us see what happens in heart involvement there is a 75 percent involvement of the joints at the same time there is a 60 percent involvement of the heart now what is this structure this is the heart 
superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve. This is the structure of the heart. From inside to outside, this is the valve, endocardium, the endocardium, myocardium and pericardium, three structures. They are the endocardium from inside to outside, endocardium, myocardium and the pericardium. Now, let us see one by one. So, what happens in what happens what happens in endocardium myocardium in the pericardium so first i write pericardium so i will make it as a two three columns and three rows so remember clinically clinically and this is the pathologically pathologically so clinically what happens in the pericardium the patient comes with the pleuritic central chest pain it comes with the pleuritic central chest pain so there is a pleuritic central chest pain now why there is a, what happens here there is a pericardial friction or rock pericardial friction pericardial friction friction now this pericardial friction and the pathogenesis pathology leads to the pericardial effusion it leads to the pericardial pericardial effusion and this pericardial effusion is appreciated in the echo it is appreciated in the echo so from here we can see that the importance of echo there are some other importance i will deal i will talk later now the second point is the involvement of the myocardium so when there is involvement so before that let me talk about the pathological feature in pericardium what happens so you must have heard about the bread and butter appearance now this bread and butter appearance comes here so this bread and butter bread and butter appearance bread and butter appearance comes here the second we talked about the pericardium now let us talk about the myocardium we talk about the myocardium now there is inflammatory process going on there is a inflammatory process going on then due to the inflammation there is a prolongation of the pr interval there is prolongation of pr inter ball now s1 is low and s3 and s4 is present i am talking about the heart sound in heart sound s1 decrease s3 s4 may be present now what are the other features other features the features of congestive cardiac failure the features of let us remove this features features of congestive cardiac failure now what are the other points the first point is prolongation of pr interval at the same time talking about the heart sound there is decrease s1 the first heart sound at the same time there the third sound and the